Hey buddy, so what is microservices architecture? Before you dig into microservices architecture, let's talk about a couple of things. The first thing is if a person talk about just microservices or microservice architecture, that means don't get confused. They are talking about the same thing. Whether microservice or microservice architecture, both are same thing. Now, let's divide architecture into two different parts. One would be on the project level, second would be on the product level. So let's go to project level. Now on the project level, you know, when you create any project, right, you go to Visual Studio, you start creating one project over here. The first thing that you think of what architecture I really need for my solution. Do I need just three layer architecture and layer architecture, onion architecture, clean architecture, etc, 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 right. So those are on the project level. Now second thing is on the product level. The product that you are building, right, what would be the size of that product? Is it too large, large enterprise or it's, you know, mini project, right? So on basis of that, you choose what architecture you need. So basically, you know, that product level architecture is just a concept that you need to implement and, you know, microservices plays the role here right that on the product level architecture so when we talk about microservices architecture we are basically talk about second architecture which is product level architecture okay now you know before i dig more i will start with you know that you know that principle which is a single responsibility principle which was coined by robert c martin right and what that principle means for sure you know one class should have single responsibility one method should have single responsibility right but over here when you talk about microservices architecture it's not on the class level it's not on the method level it's on the project level right now the question is why we need to move towards microservices architecture was the you know existing architecture the existing project structure was not enough so what actually problem we try to solve so you know to understand now you know microservices so let's go back to the history when you know there was a time we were using monolithic architecture and it's not that you know we don't use now we still use but you know let's talk about that concept first so what monolithic architecture was you know when you go ahead and take a look into the old projects which is you know there in the market from 10 years or 20 years you will find there are you know 50 of class library in one solution thousands of file in one solution and when you were you know opening your project your visual studio sometimes get hang if you don't have the good machine configurations your ram you know all those things are not good then you know you would have very hard time to open those projects so what monolithic means so you know go on the name you know what I use if I wanted to understand something what I do first of all I try to understand the meaning of that word that English word monolithic means you know single right so over here everything you know you design one product everything you write you know in just one project now that project would have you know like if 50 people are working all of them are working on the same project now you know what was the issue with those monolithic architecture so first issue is if the project size is quite large right you know imagine uh, the project size is 1 gb right now you're opening that 1 gb your project in your visual studio what will happen for sure you know it will get slow or it will crash for sure you know you can play around you can do some work around you can unload those projects but Let's talk about, you know, the difficulties. So that was the one difficulty when your project grow, when your project is there for, you know, long time, files are keep adding, size keep increasing, that will get a trouble for you to work with that project. Since that was one project, right, that one large project, for sure, it would be on one technology, let's say .NET only, right? That complete project was building only .NET, right? So you are very specific to one technology only. That means you have to hire only, you know, one skill set of people, right? Now, testing effort. Let's say there is a one bug, right, on the production. You fix that bug. Now, you know, after fixing the bug, you have to make sure 
you are not impacting you know, the other areas. When you have a large project with that monolithic architecture, you would have very hard time in the testing. You have to make sure you know those large functionalities are not impacted with your changes and you know your QA, your tester are going to sue you, your manager is going to sue you if you break any other change, right? So that testing effort was really a challenge for that monolithic architecture. And you know, the other problem was scaling. It was very hard to scale. So let's say you are working in the .NET. Now, you know, .NET keep upgrading. If you wanted to upgrade now .NET version to the latest version, understand thousands of files, different solutions, different class libraries, 50 class libraries, right? Now you have to make sure, you know, you are not impacting those areas as well, right? So it was very hard to scale, very hard to upgrade, right? And for sure, you know, time consuming. Only reason is that monolithic architecture, because you know, that increase your testing effort, that increase your development effort, you know, and for sure it is costly. The kind of knowledge transfer when you know, someone join your team, the kind of knowledge transfer to, you know, all those areas are going to take time, right? And when it take time, time is directly, indirectly, you know, impact your cost for that product, for that project, right? So those were the issues with monolithic architecture. So does that mean, you know, should we really don't go for monolithic architecture? No. So here we go. How to identify if I need monolithic architecture or some other architecture. So, you know, first question that you need to ask, what kind of application you are building? What kind of product you are building, right? Is it going to be large enterprise app or it is, you know, very small application, right? So if it is small application, go for monolithic, there is no issue, right? If it is a large enterprise app, go for microservices architecture, right? So that is how you can decide monolithic versus microservices. Now, you know what microservices is. So, okay, so over here, what we do, we don't create just one project, right? Not just one API. So basically, you know, the services is API, right? Let's if we wanted to make it simple, let's not use service word, let's use API, let's call it micro API, right? So we create multiple APIs, depend on the domain, what kind of domain it would be, right? We create different APIs, we divide those APIs into micro APIs, into you know smaller parts, we create multiple projects. Okay, you know what? The first thing, when you go for you know microservices, what thing you need to remember? So identify, you know, the services. Let's say you are creating a one product, you know, shopping cart system, right? Like Amazon website. Over here, what you will do, first of all, you will identify, you know, how many services you need. You will divide your services into smaller part on the basis of domain. Let's say there is a one job called background job, which only run on the background. So you will create one project called background jobs. There is other domain which only take care about, so about all the payment system. So you will create other project called something called, you know, cost management or payment system that would be separate API. Now the third thing which manage all the reports. So you will create report management API. There is other domain which, you know, take care about all the users that are enrolled on that website, whether it's a guest user, you know, regular user. So all those customers, you will create a separate API and you will call it user management API, right? So basically you don't create one single project. You create multiple projects and those projects are communicating with each other with the help of API, right? Every single project is itself a API. So API is one way of communication between different microservices. Okay, now the next thing, in the monolithic, you are very dependent on the technology, but in the microservices, you are free from technology. You wanted to create user management in PHP or Java, go for that. You know, cost management API, you think it would be good in .NET, go for .NET. That means, you know, you can use any technology and every those services will talk through those API and they are not dependent on the technology. Same for report, right? Use any report technology.
Okay, so over here, you know, we need to understand the importance of API gateway. Okay, so in microservices, if you look at this diagram, the client is like, let's say, you know, client wanted to, client could be anything. It could be UI application, it could be Postman, or it could be any, you know, other system which make a call to your APIs, right? Your one microservice. Now, since the, all of these are the microservices, but, you know, actually they are the one application, right? So, you know, if you see every microservices have their own set of database. Now, one could be, you know, SQL, the other could be MySQL, the third could be MongoDB, you know, Cosmos DB, any other thing, right? Over here, although they are divided into, you know, microservices, but they belongs to one product. So normally what we do, you know, to fill that gap, what approach we can use, we can introduce one API gateway, right? So every request will go through that API gateway, right? With the same URL, the base URL would be same every time and only, you know, the path would get changed like API slash user, API slash cost, but the base URL would be same, right? And then on the basis of path, it will make a call to the microservices, the respective microservices that client needs. If you look at this diagram, one is microservice architecture and second is monolithic architecture, right? On the monolithic architecture, if you see everything is under same project, right? User interface layer is there, data access layer there, business logic is there. Now, but you know, the main thing is one solution only, right? And if you see it has only one database, but on the other side, microservices architecture, if you see there is a one user interface and those user interface is connected to different microservices, right? All of these are the different APIs, one API, second API, third API, fourth, five and six and so on, right? Now, every API would have their own set of database, their own set of technology. Now it could be, let's say, you know, this microservice is using SQL. This microservice is using MongoDB. This microservice is using CosmoDB, right? So every service, every API have their own choice, you know, what technology they wanted to use. Now, you know, I think you already know what's the benefit of Microsoft architecture, but let's, you know, still talk about those benefits. The first benefit is less development effort. Now, what that means? Okay, you know, that means since it is divided into microservices, that means, you know, multiple teams can work parallelly on their domain, on their APIs. That means, you know, at the same time, multiple things can be done, right? So that is what less development effort. Now, second is improved scalability. So, you know, over here, if you wanted to upgrade your .NET version to the latest, that would be very easy, right? Because, you know, you are going to impact only one API, not the other API right so that scalability is improved here now third is independent deployment over here since everything is divided into micro parts into the smaller parts the changes are done in only one part only the one microservice you don't need to you know worry about the other microservices right you will deploy only that service where the change was done right all these services are independent from the deployment perspective as well now the fourth is error isolation okay so over here if there is any bug on the production you know in that particular domain we don't need to worry about the other areas we don't need to you know, jump into the other code bases and keep fixing over here, we know, you know, this API, this microservices get only impacted. So that means we are isolating that, we are fixing that, and we are deploying that, right? So that means this is also independent, right? Now, you know, integration with various tech stacks. I think we already talked, right? So since all these are different microservices, they are free to choose any technology, right? You are free to hire different skill set of people, right? One for PHP team, second would be Java team, third would be Node.js team, you know, and .NET team. Every other team can work with their own microservices. And in the end, you are creating one product. Okay, so that's all for today's video. I will see in the next video.